380,566,414,401. Just some of the numerical analyses and features have, pre have been presented here. The law of chances indicates that these features could not have occurred by sheer chance or accident, but that they were arranged and designed. Many books in the world have been examined to see if there are similar numerical features. Much time has been devoted, for example, to the books of classic Greece, in an effort to find similar mathematical structure, but no, not, but no such phenomena has yet been found. Indeed, there are many marvelous numeric designs which run through the 66 books of the Protestant Bible. These are patterns which bind the books together into one great book. If a single book is added or removed, certain numeric designs or chains which tie these books together are destroyed. And considering the Apocrypha, the Bibles of the Roman Catholic and Greek churches, there is no evidence of numerical features and designs in those Bibles. These numerical facts and features found in the Protestant Bible act as a safeguard and check against tampering with a divinely planned number of books. This observation has caused an author to state, The amazing numerical facts and designs are interwoven in the Bible text in such a peculiar and marvelous manner that no power on earth can blot them out. They are woven into God's word as a thread is woven in a dollar bill to assure its genuineness. They are imprinted on the pages of scripture as watermarks are imprinted in paper for verification and identification. They guard the Bible against errors and interpolations as the intricate designs on a banknote or check guard against counterfeits and interpolations. God has marked his word in a marvelous manner. The Masoretes were Jewish scribes known for their meticulousness, zeal, and accuracy in copying. Comparisons of the Masoretic text with earlier Latin and Greek versions have shown very careful copying and little deviation during the thousand years from 100 BC to 900 AD. These scribes were very accurate and dedicated to the scriptures. The accuracy of these texts was further confirmed by the Dead Sea Scrolls. The discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls at Qumran has been hailed as the outstanding archaeological discovery of the 20th century. The Dead Sea Scrolls were found in 1947 when a young Bedouin boy found some strange clay jars in caves near the valley of the Dead Sea. Inside the jars were leather scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls sat untouched in a perfect arid environment for approximately 2,000 years. The Dead Sea Scrolls include a fully intact and complete copy of the book of Isaiah, a fragmented copy of Isaiah, and fragments of almost every book in the Old Testament. A comparison of the Dead Sea manuscript of Isaiah with the Masoretic texts reveals them to be extremely close and accurate with each other. Here is a section of Isaiah 49, 5-16, in excellent condition from the Dead Sea Scrolls collection. Based on various dating methods, including paleographic, scribal, and carbon-14, the Dead Sea Scrolls were written during the period from about 200 BC to 68 AD. Many crucial messianic manuscripts, such as Psalm 22, Isaiah 53, and Isaiah 61, date to at least 100 years before Christ. These Dead Sea Scrolls, dating before the time of Christ, have enormously supported and verified the Old Testament version that we have today and the accuracy of the Messianic prophecies. Phenomenally, the Dead Sea Scrolls, written and sealed 2,000 years ago, are in incredible agreement with the translation of the Old Testament that we use today. There are over 5,000 manuscript sources of the Greek New Testament known to exist. These manuscripts were written mostly on papyrus or on parchment. The enormous amount of manuscript evidence which has survived to our time contains all or portions of the New Testament. Some of the major contributors to the New Testament that we have today are the Codex 
Vaticanus, and Codex Sinaiticus. These are two excellent parchment copies of the entire New Testament, which date from the 4th century A.D. We also have an early Chester Beatty papyrus. This source contains fragments and portions of the New Testament that date from 200 years before Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. This Chester Beatty papyrus, P45, P46, P47, is dated around A.D. 180 to 225. A.D. Also is the Bodmer Papyrus, P66, P77, shown here, dating to 200 A.D. Incredibly, from just the Chester Beatty and Bodmer manuscripts alone, we can construct almost all of the New Testament. These sources give us all of the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of John, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, Hebrews, and portions of the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Mark, the Book of Acts, and Revelation. The oldest known New Testament piece is a papyrus fragment containing John 18, 31 through 33 and 37. It is the Rylands papyrus P52 and dates from around 130 A.D. This brings us back nearly to the first century A.D. This gives evidence that the Gospel of John could not have been written later than 130 A.D. Also for an early source is the early 1st Peter papyrus. This is an old Greek manuscript from 1st Peter around 200 A.D. Plus there are many other scripture manuscripts such as these codices discovered. In summary, there are over 5,000 manuscript sources for our New Testament text in Greek alone. In addition, there are more than 1,000 manuscript sources in Syriac, Coptic, Armenian, Gothic, and Ethiopic, plus 8,000 copies in the Latin Vulgate. In all, the New Testament has over 14,000 sources for the modern text that we use today. As we've seen, the manuscript evidence for the New Testament is dramatic, with thousands of ancient manuscripts discovered and archived so far, over 5,000 of which are copies in the original Greek. This manuscript evidence far surpasses the evidence we have for other ancient writings that are commonly accepted. Consider some of the other major accepted works and how relatively few sources exist, exist for these. Julius Caesar's The Gallic Wars, ten manuscripts remain. Pliny the Younger's Natural History, seven manuscripts remain. Thucydides' History, eight manuscripts. Herodotus's History, eight manuscripts. Plato, seven manuscripts. And Tacitus's Annals, twenty manuscripts. Compare these with the over 5,000 manuscripts for the New Testament in Greek alone. Another major work is Homer's Iliad, the most renowned ancient Greek book. It is the second best preserved literary work of antiquity, second only to the New Testament. The Iliad has 643 copies of manuscript support discovered. Compare this 643 with the over 14,000 manuscript support for the New Testament. In the Iliad, 764 lines of text are questionable representing over 5% of the entire text, and the integrity of that work is typically not questioned. Many people are unaware that there are no surviving manuscripts of any of William Shakespeare's plays written in the 1600s. Both Homer's and Shakespeare's support pale in comparison with the over 5,000 copies and fragments of the New Testament in Greek alone. Notice when we compare the New Testament to other ancient works. We see that the New Testament has thousands of manuscripts in support, while the other works have only few or hundreds. Comparing the time span between the original and the retrieved copies, the New Testament sources are much closer to the time of the original writings than are the other major